Hey, we want to welcome you guys back to our Covenant podcast. It's been so exciting to get to sit down with a lot of different people from a lot of different walks of life. And today it's going to be another one of those special days for me. This guy to my left is uh has just become just a very special friend to me. And uh, and what what's been going on in our church? You know, just to give you a little background. It's just been amazing to watch the last few years how God has just begun to transform lives. It's, and I tell people this all the time. It's not like we're preaching a different message or playing some different songs. It just, it's just a season where God is just going uh, in deep with people, and they're going in deep with him. And uh, so and one of the products of of what God is doing here is is my buddy Robbie. Uh, he's we, We've probably only known each other now for how long? A year and a half. Year and a half. He started coming to church. I I, I knew his fiance since she was probably a teenager, and uh, she went to church here years ago. And uh, I'll let him tell you how they ended up getting back here. Uh, but the, the best part of what happened in their lives uh, when we kind of reconnected, and I don't think it's because we reconnected. Don't hear me wrong, but I think it's it's just the season that God had him in, and it's just been absolutely beautiful to watch. And so. Uh, it's my buddy, uh, Robbie. So tell me a little bit about yourself, uh, and then we'll get started. I'm, on uh, uh, <clears throat> my name is Robbie Walls. I'm from uh, Dallas, North Carolina. Old North Gaston boy. Old North Gaston boy. Graduated in 1997, uh, 43 years old. Have a daughter that's 21. Yeah. Um, the police chief at Dallas, North Carolina. I've done law enforcement ever since I was 20 years old. Yeah. It's about all I know how to do. Um, just... That's me. I've had a um, kind of had a perfect life. I've, yeah. I've, you know, I've, I'm one of those that you know we talk about in Sundays. You don't realize you're broken until you realize you're broken. Yeah, and lost. But uh, I'm gonna tell you, man. I, I I told Chris another night, sitting back and looking at my life and things that's happened through my life, is you really think you 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 reel yourself back in, and it's like the old you and the past you. You can remember things. Yeah. But the more I dig in with with our Heavenly Father and God and Jesus, yeah. it's it's changing my old life into a it's there, but it's cloudy. Yeah. It's a cloudy there. It's not yeah. the it's not the clear, the clearness that I see now. Yeah. Um and I can sit here and t- talk about, you know, the, the things that, that I've done and things that I've had, but something else is has turned inside of me. It's not about me anymore. Yeah. Uh, me and Kristen's talked about it. It's not about what title I hold or yeah. Or what I've done with my life, or what I've achieved, it's I just have a whole different outlook yeah. on on myself as a person, and what I want to try to get out of other people now. Yeah. So, I tell you what, I, what I've enjoyed watching from my my seat in in the in your life is uh, this law enforcement people. You tough guys, you have to deal with a whole lot of tough things. You carry <laughs> weapons and arrest criminals and. You, you gotta, you gotta have this kind of tough guy mentality out there on the streets. But I've watched God break your heart, and I probably have uh, watched you cry uh, and cried with <laughs> you as much as anybody in our church in the last year and a half. And uh, it's just been a, in, incredible to watch uh, how God can soften a heart. And yeah, He does. <laughs> he, 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 and he does. Did. Yeah, yeah. You're right. You have to. A lot of people, when you look at the law enforcement field, with the stuff we deal with, we do have to have that code of of armor, yeah. that kind of um, toughness to, to let the stuff bounce off of you. But, you know, you've preached on it before. I have a different coat of armor now. It's a different coat. It's not the coat that I used to have of yeah. of the coldness. It's more of the care, and it's the the guys at work have seen me cry more. I'll have meetings now. And <laughs> I just, it's my heart. It's my heart speaking out. It's no more the the pre-stage kind of what I know I'm supposed to say. I just, yeah. I just speak from the heart, and what you see is what you get kind of thing. Yeah. That's yeah. the biggest thing in my life that I feel like changed is yeah. you're cool. gonna you're gonna get me at face value now. Yeah. There's the real yeah. you, right? Yes, sir. Right. So end up uh tell me a little bit about how you end up here. I I know we talked about you'd ridden by here a couple times with Kristen and mm-hmm. uh, and you, you told her you was gonna have to come sometime or whatever. That's Did. that that became an interesting story. How so uh, so when I met Kristen, uh met her back in October of twenty nineteen. Um, like I said, I wasn't in a church and I never really grown up into the church. Um, I knew about, about God and I, and I knew who he was and I know he's the creator of all things. I knew that, but I never had been in church Yeah. and me and Krista never really talked about that. Um, that's one of those uncomfortable conversations you use. You, you don't have with people 
Yeah. Uh, I never asked her about religion or if she went to church or anything like that. And just as we, you know, as we started dating and driving around, I remember we come to Lincolnton a couple of times and I'm not familiar with Lincolnton a lot. Right. And for some reason we would come down this road right here to get to the main downtown Lincolnton, which would have been faster to go to 321 yeah. to Lincolnton exit. And I can remember riding by a couple of times. And I remember the first time we rode by, she said, I used to go to that church up there. And I said, oh, that's pretty cool. It's a big church up on the hill. Didn't think nothing about it. Just drive down the road. And there'd been other times we'd come by and I'd say, so do you like that church? What was it like? I said, you know, the people judge you on, on what you wear or tattoos or anything like that. And she says, no, nah, it's like, it's like home. It's like a family. And I don't know, Mike, I just, you know, the longer we started dating, I just, something, something just kept in the back of my mind eating at me saying, Hey, you need to step out of that comfort zone. And I asked her one day, I said, uh, so you don't go to church Sunday up there. And just the, the look on her face is just like, yeah, 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 I want to go. So, um, I remember I was getting ready. I asked her, you know, what am I supposed to wear? She said, be com- wear what you wear, be comfortable. Yeah. And, um, so I put on some pants and a decent looking shirt and I'm not going to lie to you. I remember driving here and I remember pulling up and I had those butterflies, like just scared butterflies. Cause yeah. I didn't know what to expect. And, uh, we pulled in the parking lot and never forget, got out of the car, started getting greeted by people. And a lot of people recognized Kristen and just, you know, hugging her, shaking her hand. And, and just the people, the, the, the pouring out that they were giving into me, I was like, Oh, right, just not, not going to be too bad. Yeah. I think I can handle this. And, and, you know, like I said, I'm not perfect. And, and walking into church, I was scared because I know um, throughout my childhood, I've, I've went to churches and stuff. And to be honest, I used to do it just to play sports when I was back in high school. Yeah. I'd say, oh, they got a good softball team. I'm going to yeah. play on that. I've been there and I remember <laughs> when you walk into churches, you always have that feeling of, you know, oh, man, I felt the preacher's going to be talking about me today. I think he's going to be talking about me. So in my mind, I know I had that feeling like eh, he's probably going to say a message today. It's just going to be something about me or directed towards me. But I remember we got in, we were greeted. A lot of people walked up, act like they had known me forever, shook my hand, introduced themselves. And we sat down and I just sat there that whole service. And, and I couldn't even tell you what you even preached about that day. I can't either. But I remember <laughs> when it was over, I looked at Kristen and I remember the whole time we were doing things. I remember my hands were sweating real bad. I was just nervous. And I kept feeling that warm feeling through the, through the service. And I remember I was like, man, it's hot in here. <laughs> and, uh, and we got out in the car and I'll never forget when we got in the car, I cried and I cried and I kept crying and she cried and we didn't do a lot of talking about it. I just told her, I said, that felt like home to me today. And, uh, we come back, we come back, we kept coming back and there come a period of time after a couple of weeks, uh, I was just sitting at work one day and I, I just reached out to you Yeah, I remember and I said, that is day. there any way you could meet me? Uh, is there a day you can meet me? And you said, you said I could. And Actually, I what I nervous. said was, I'm here right now. What are you doing right now? And you said, yeah. I'll be there in 30 minutes. <laughs> no, I came in and you sat down with me and I just told you, I didn't know if I'd ever been saved. Uh, I remember a youth pastor years ago uh, had talked to me and prayed. I don't remember what it actually was said. I just know my heart wasn't there that day because if I would have been saved that day, I would have known what happened that day. Yeah. And you just grabbed my hands and we prayed and I gave my life to the Lord. And I'll never forget, uh, I had my phones on vibrate I sitting on the that. table and I didn't want to open my eyes. I said, you know, I'm, I'm fully into this. And I remember when I opened my eyes, the missed call was my dad. Yeah. And, uh, you ask, you wonder if God will give you a sign to just see, Cause you know what your heart feels, but then you wonder, is it true? Am I really, am I really there? Yeah. And when I told you who it was, I can remember you said, if that's not confirmation from your heavenly father of acceptance, he let your earthly father call you during that. Yeah. And I'm going to tell you, Mike, he works in mysterious ways and what a random phone call to get from my dad. My dad never calls me during the day because I'm at work and he knows if I'm working, I'm working. Yeah. And as soon as that happened, I mean, you talked, my phone went off and it was my mom yeah. texting me, just checking on me. Yeah. And that's just like times two. I'm telling you, you were with me now. Yeah. And I, I started seeing my life changing. Um, my conversations started becoming different with people. Um, tried to start doing the right thing. I said, you know what? I'm in this. I'm, I'm going to go hundred percent in this. And me and Kristen talked about it. And, um, 
you know, she lives, she lives at her apartment. I live at mine. So we were already on, on board with that. Um, and I just, I started digging deeper and, and I wanted to learn more about the Bible cause I didn't know anything. And, and all the questions I had and, and stuff like that, I just said, you know, you know, what about this or what about that? And, you know, having her as a backbone support, I could bounce anything in the world off of, off of her, Mike, and she'll have an answer for me Yeah, or she'll tell me, you know, read the Bible about that. Check that out. That's, and I don't know, man, I'm just the, the fire in me. And, and they, over these last couple of months, it's a different fire that's been ignited in me. It's a, it's a deeper want to learn more. Yeah. And I just, just mad at myself for, for all those years. I feel like I've wasted so many years of what I have now when I could have had then. Yeah. And just to know where my life could be if I would have done the right thing back then. Yeah. But I just know it's in my plan. It was in my plan for me to meet you yeah, and to be at this church. And, and, you know, I, I, I fully stand behind, you know, he's going to use me as a warrior. That's, that's my, I've played sports my whole life and I'm very competitive. Yeah. And I'm hungry for this and this yeah. is what I want. And I'm going to yeah. go after what I want when it comes to that. I'm, yeah. I'm just excited about learning about everything and, yeah. and having her as a backbone support there for me and, and, and things we discussed. And I'm going to tell you, Mike, I have conversations with our Heavenly Father all the time. People probably look at me when I'm at work or I'm sitting somewhere and I'm talking in my truck or I'm in my office and they're probably like, who is he talking to? And I'm like, mm, I'm talking to who I need to be talking to. Yeah. But I have them all the time. I don't, I don't just pick one time a day to, yeah. to have prayer, Mike. I, I do it a lot. Yeah. And, um, well, I've been really proud of you back to that story a little bit just to give you guys some backdrop on why it was a big deal that his dad and his mom, his dad called his mom text within like a two minute window after right when we got through praying. We just had a conversation right before we prayed about uh, how much he loved his parents and his family and Kristen and how he, he wanted to, to to be a good son and to, to to be a good future husband and all that stuff. and and how he hoped that his hunger for the Lord would uh, he translate into all of them seeing that in him and and getting hungry for it as well. And uh, and so we had just literally prayed for him uh, to get saved, and we had prayed for your parents specifically uh, that day, and, and just praying God's encouragement over them. And and when that phone beeped, and he looked down at his dad. Uh, them tears started rolling and uh it was a it was a powerful moment i don't know how to explain why you know god god does what god does you know and and he can confirm what he does in a million different ways but for you that day uh you've always needed uh for your dad to affirm you and and it was almost like an affirmation moment where his dad was affirming even though he didn't even know he was affirming it that you had made the right decision and then your mom i mean like right behind that check like, how are you doing, son? You know, I love you, whatever. Became like the icing on the cake that both the parents that we just prayed for. And I don't know how we knew this, but it was like somehow or another the Lord was encouraging us to know that, man, this is a good day. And uh, and it was a good day. Uh, we we both shed some tears that day, and and I could be I could see a future uh, brotherhood like we are sharing and enjoying. We are we are very close friends. Now we we talk more than. Sundays and Wednesdays, yeah. we, we, I pray for him often because I know he's in a dangerous position, uh, and I and I know he's. I watched, you know, his, I watched his language change, his heart change, his life change, and it's been a blessing from from my perspective. And so I, I guess I want to talk to you a little bit about how how what what did you see change? How how did it change you and Kristen's relationship? You know how how. Cause I watched y'all go to another space. We did when uh, uh, when you got saved and and y'all started running this, pulling on the same end of the ropes. What I like to call it. Yeah, know? yeah. Just talked about that. It um it did. You know you before you're saved, you think you you think your relationship's good and, and everything looks to be fine. Yeah. But when you peel that layer back, and and that's what I did. I just peeled that layer back and went into a new endeavor. I know um, right after I got saved, a couple months after that, I was still in my old ways on some aspects of our relationship. Yeah. Uh, the hard headed in me, not wanting to to compromise or to you really hard headed. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes I can be. And she, uh, I never forget, we had a uh, we had a couple heated moments one night, and 
she, she told just, me she she put me in my place. <laughs> she gave me a. a she talked to not in a bad way. She just she talked to Robbie and pretty much opened my eyes to I'm not that old person anymore. And if I wanted to continue to build our relationship together, I had to let that old person die. Yeah. And uh, it was a heart check moment for me. I sat on the couch and I remember I was by myself and I cried and and I asked God. I said, <clears throat> "She's different." And I said, "I I don't want to lose what." what I know is there any woman that can pray with me and for me and want to see me be a better version of myself. You don't find that every day. Yeah. And, uh, I remember I reached out to her and I said, I'll change. If, I, if I'm going to go fully in, I got to be fully in, in all aspects of my life. I can't be in there part time or just when it fits the, the agenda I have. So, uh, without getting too much into their business that same night, she, she sent me a, <laughs> An uh, email, and um, I think you probably know this by now. I, I do. Then. <laughs> and she said, I, I love this man with all my heart. She said, but he's got to let God finish this thing in him. And I just threw some stuff out there tonight. Will you be praying for us? And I said, absolutely, because I believe, you know, I believe in y'all's future together. I believe in your future individually, but, but I believe in your future together. And I believe God's up to something major. And she said, well, thank you. Just pray for us. And then. You responded. <laughs> I did. Uh, but I remember I was a little agitated at first. And she told me she reached out to you. Yeah. I was like, oh, my gosh, man. Now, now, he's gonna, knows. now he knows knows our business. But then she told me, she said, "It's it, you, you've got to change. And she said, it don't matter who knows. She said, if you're where you should be, it don't matter. She yeah. said, you got to do right. Yeah. And she did. She gave me a heart check moment. And yeah. that, that in, in my opinion, was the turning point in our relationship because – what I done at that time was I respected her more yeah. the way I should have been respected the way God would have wanted me to respect my yeah. better half. And yeah. I just had to know that I had to be fully in. I can't be in part time. Yeah. I can't be saved to Christ and then still live my own way. When I yeah. wanted to live it that way, yeah. I have to fully just open my heart up and say, take me, this is it. Take yeah. me, take, yeah. build, take me, mold me how you want me to be. Use yeah. me how you want me to use me yeah. in this this piece of a puzzle. Yeah. Don't know what my piece is, but I know he's going to put me where I need to be. And no matter what that is. So. Yeah. Well, I'm in a, um, so you guys, I'm in a small group with them now. Uh, you know, we do a lot of small group stuff here and I'm, I'm in a small group. I'm, I like that. I'm not the leader of the small group. I just go like, I'm one of the, I want to be just the regular person there, but I'm in a small group with them. And I've watched the development of your love and your relationship. Uh, since that moment just become like, I mean, nothing sort of, not not just miraculous, but just beautiful to watch too. The way y'all love each other is, is, is such a blessing in my heart. And I had my anniversary this past week, 34 years. But, but it also reminds me, even after 34 years, I have to keep the main things the main thing when it comes to love and honoring my wife. I see that in some of you younger people that are, are just getting started it becomes an encouragement to to me. So I, I'm telling you, God, God's not, not just going to use you in in the law enforcement community or in the church community. He's going to use you in, in 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 with other couples, with other things that that He's perfecting in you. Not perfect in the state that we're perfect like Him, but He's fixing some things in you uh, that uh, He'll use in, in the lives of, of of other people moving forward. And so I, I remember. Uh, this probably leads you into another story. I, I remember not too, too long after the email moment, we'll call that, when, the, yeah. <laughs> when he didn't like her. I hope he's learned since then that he can tell me anything and that, that never going to be judgment for me yeah. or whatever. That he don't have to be ashamed of who he is because we're just real and we're men and we're trying to get it right. And it's a, it's a, I tell people all the time I'm a work in progress still. It doesn't matter if you're too. a preacher or a chief of police or, uh, or somebody picking up garbage every day. It doesn't matter. You know, we're all a work in progress. We we're not like him yet. We we want to be like him. But I remember right after, uh, not too, too long after, that that moment, that email moment where it was like called some things. She called some some things of a godly man out in you. She said, I want to see this in you. I believe it's there. I believe you have great potential. That y'all's relationship went to this whole, whole other level. And then, 
you called me and let me in on something that you were going to do uh, uh, with the going to the mountains thing. And, yeah. and uh, so obviously it's led to something more powerful in their relationship. So, so you're engaged now. Tell, tell us how that happened. <laughs> so, yeah, um, <clears throat> we're engaged. I, I just, you know, when that's, you know, when it feels right. Yeah. Um, and it did. And I was doing everything I could. I wanted to make sure that I done it right. I, I, I didn't make any mistakes. I made her happy. And I knew this time having our Lord and Savior behind me yeah. was, was key. And that's why I came to you. Yeah. And I just thought, I thought, and I prayed on it. And I said, I want, I want Pastor Mike to pray over these, this ring. I want him to, to pour, pour into this because I don't want to mess this up. Like this yeah. is, she's my world. And, yeah. and I want her to know that, you know, she's a strong woman behind me and she's what pushes me and, and, and the things she's teaching me and the things mm -hmm. she's encouraging me to do in the word. And, mm -hmm. and I just love her. So we, and the thing she's kinda, doing in the word too, is pretty powerful. She too. is. Yeah. And she, she just, you know, always giving me that encouragement. And, you know, I'll never forget when I took her to uh, ask her to marry me at a, it's a place called pretty place. Yeah. And I knew in my heart, I wanted to do it somewhere that had meaning and purpose to me. And, there's a cross that overlooks a mountain up there. And um, I just knew that was where it needed to be yeah. because the foundation of our relationship, me and her discussed it before she ever knew I was going to ask her to marry me was God's first. Yeah. And I knew to kneel down at that cross, to ask her to be my wife. Wow. Was you practice what you're going to say. And you <laughs> think in your head, I'm going to say this, 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 and this. And I'll never forget, Mike, we got up there and I had this photographer. I'd hired this photographer to be up there and we're out there and just ladies taking pictures. And I'm like, oh, I'm going to be able to pull this off. This is going to be pretty good. And the lady comes up to us, says, hey, I'm doing a portfolio. Could I use y'all for some pictures? And I'm like, yes. She and she looks at me and Chris said, you, you mind? I said, oh, no, let's go up there. Let's take some pictures. So me and her had a keyword, like a clue that she would tell her to step forward, me to stand behind her. Yeah. And give her a bear hug. Bear yeah. hug was the clue word. Yeah. And if she said bear hug, that was my cue to get on my knee. Yeah. So I remember we were up there and I was looking at the cross. I was like, got to get close to the cross. I got to get close to the cross. And I knew what I was going to say. <laughs> I'll never forget when she had her walk up, there's people out there just looking at the cross. So we had a fan base that didn't even know we had it. <laughs> and I'll never forget. I dropped down on my knee and I was just sitting there and I was waiting. And she just looked at me and she just turned around and. I just froze. I froze. <laughs> and, and, and it had to be, you know, it had to be God. He just, he just opened my mouth and I said, would you please do me an honor and be my wife? And, and it was so short and sweet, not even what I was wanting to say. <laughs> and we just hugged and kissed. And I just, I don't know, that moment will forever last in my mind is I wanted to show her that God is the foundation of what we have. And that's what we're going to build on. Yeah. And having him in our life and, and, you know, He's the catapult that's brought us together. Yeah. I, I firmly believe that. We both have prayed for that person in our life to find that person that, that fits us. And, and I know God had a purpose and a plan Amen. for this. Yeah. Well, as you guys might imagine, our, our small group is uh, a, a lot of us that uh, that have a, a, a rough background where we didn't honor the Lord in relationship or any other place. And uh I'm just in the mix, but we spend a whole lot of time in our small group praying and crying, <laughs> you know, for each other and uh, and and in cheering each other on to um, just become a, an inc incredible opportunity for me to get to watch you build community of believers around you too. You're the friends that you're you're building in, in the body of Christ that inspire, encourage, believe in you guys. It's been it's been pretty intense, uh, but I've, I've I just want you to know, no matter how much. It matters to me to get to be on this journey with you, to to be your pastor in this season is in, in, an incredible honor for me. And 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 the way you honor Kristen, who I've known since she was a teenager, uh, is is such a blessing. But but more but more than that, your passion to worship the Lord and to and to uh, I've watched this tough, strong guy not like, not just cry and and be vulnerable <laughs> that way, but to be a guy who was 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 standing in front of the Lord and just tears streamed down his face and lift his hands up before the Lord and say, I'm all yours. Absolutely. And, uh, and I, I, I see that as a picture of what's going on in your spirit, man. And, uh, and I, I just couldn't be more proud of you, brother. And uh, it's a privilege to do this with you. Yeah. I appreciate it. I'm telling you, Mike, it's, it's been life changing. 
Um, like I said, conversations now, they have a different purpose to them. Yeah. Uh, what you start to realize is the people you used to have conversations with before. Yeah. If it doesn't have any kind of substance to it anymore, or it's not part Etern- of what eternally I eternally valuable, yeah. Then it it's not yeah. a conversation I even have anymore. I, yeah. I've just started to notice. I see different things. I see different things in people now, yeah. um, which is kind of crazy to me. Is you know, there's been times where I've, I've messaged you. Um, I'll be in a dead sleep, and it's like the you know the Lord will come to me in a word, and I'll jump straight up when I wake up, and that's the first thing I want to read. Yeah. And and some of the things that he guides me and, and, and tells me to look at or, or to to do is I used to say is crazy, but I don't think that word crazy is the right word to use. It's it's very assuring that he is using me in a way that like I just don't understand it sometimes. I just yeah. I, I ask myself, like, man, like is this real. This is just <laughs> this is this is I'll I'll say the word cool yeah. because I'm seeing things at times and it, it yeah. don't come all the time. Yeah. But there'll be times, uh, I can give you a quick example. I was in that class last week, yeah. met a guy in his class, didn't know him from anybody. It was a law enforcement class, by the way, where he had to go for some training. <laughs> yeah. um, and I don't know, I I, I was diving into the, uh, my Bible, I was reading the book of John, and I was reading through some stuff, and something come over me that night and said, I want you to take this passage, and I want you to go write this down. He said, that man needs to hear that. And we come to class the next day, got a little note card, wrote down a, a little, you know, a little snip bit of it and I yeah. passed it over to him and I said, Hey, I want you to know that, you know, I was doing some Bible study last night and it's come to me. And I said, I don't know what's going on in your life, but just read it. And he said, I want to read it in private. And we went on a break and I told Kristen about it and I tried to get emotional. He come back in after break and, uh, I know he kept staring at me and he's setting two people down for me. And, uh, when the day was over, he just walked up to me and he hugged me and he started crying. He said, you're a good man. He said, I can see that. And, you know, so I appreciate that. That's what we tell everybody. Yeah. But uh, he, <clears throat> he said, you don't know how much that meant to me. He said, I don't know where that come from. But he said, those words were on the spot. Yeah. And I just told him, I said, well, just take those words and trust what God's telling you. Yeah. I said, he's got a plan for everything. And I said, just yeah. listen to the word. Don't run away from it. Yeah. And, uh, I had to catch myself sometimes that yeah. is we all want to, I'm not going to say question, but in the book of John, when I was reading a lot of my, I told Chris, I was like, why are they always questioning? Yeah. Why are they always questioning <laughs> Jesus? Like, well, if you can do this, show me this, or if you can do that. And I said, I just, how many times does he have to show you? Wow. He is who he That's is. And, and, and I kept reading that last night and I kept reading it and it just, we just got to tell ourselves, you know, we don't question it. it w- How many times does he have to prove to us he is who he is? And, yeah. that, and that's what, that's what's just to me is exciting is yeah. I don't ask him to prove that to me anymore. I know who he is and yeah, I know awesome. that he's going to continue to do the things for me and not to praise him when the goods happen. I used to be guilty of that. Yeah. that something good would happen or I would say, you know, having a bad day. And I would say, I'd say, Lord, just, just please just help me through this. Help me through this. We can't ask just when we, when we're, when we're on the bad side of it, yeah. are we praying when we're on the good side? Cause that's when we need to pray too, because everything yeah. that happens, he's teaching yeah. us a life lesson Amen. and we have to have those bads yeah. to grow. And, yeah. and I tell myself all the time, if something bad happens, that's something I've noticed changing myself, something bad happen or something difficult at work. He's working in me. He's showing wow. me, he's that's teaching good. me something that when you look back, you're like, wait a minute, a couple of weeks ago, this happened. And then this happened today. So you start putting two and two together. He works at his pace and at his time. But then it's like he he turns that light bulb on for you to realize. Yeah. You didn't ask to see, but now I showed you what you see. Yeah. And that to me is just awesome. Like yeah. I. Well, you, you know, just, it might be my favorite part of watching your story, and you know, is uh, how a, a guy that was Mr. Tough Guy a year and a half ago gave, gave his life to the Lord. What thirteen month. Uh, 13 months ago, March 3rd, 2021 yeah, got, got saved. <laughs> uh, and how the childlike faith that you immediately began to walk in, you know, where you just would read it and you'd say, that's true. That's true. You know, I, I didn't you ain't read the Bible much your whole life, but now you read it all the time. And, and whatever he says in there, you just say, that's true. That's true. And one of the things that you did, I remember a couple of weeks ago in our small group, uh, 
it might have been the last mold refaction. I can't remember, but you came in at the end of the it was it was your anniversary mm -hmm. day. It was for your salvation, and you said, "Today I decided to go through the list of everybody in our small group and ask the Lord for a Bible verse and an encouragement for every one of you." And this guy that just got saved 13 months ago that didn't know anything about the Word before goes on a piece of paper and for every couple in our small group wrote down a Bible verse that he felt was very specific to our hearts and our family life and, and what was going on in our relationship and, and wrote a note to every single one of us in that group. And uh, and we don't see it coming because you, you just, you know, you just started. Most people think, well, only people that's been living for Jesus for 30 years will think to do that. But but your childlike faith, in fact, one of the reasons I wanted to have you in, come in today was was this childlike faith that you're walking in. It's just, if he says it, you believe it. If he encourages you, you do it. And, and he's making a real difference in a lot of people's lives just because he takes God's word at face value. But that all started with one simple yes to Jesus. And, uh, and man, your yes to Jesus has affected my life. And uh, I, I wanted you to know that. We're kind of winding it down here. I just want to, it, it, I want anything that you would, if, if you could, if you have like two minutes with anybody in the world that doesn't know him, what would you say to him? You know, and in we'll, with that kind of, you know, like. <sighs> so if I had to tell somebody that that didn't know who he was, I would tell them this: uh, Don't be scared. Swallow your pride. And think back to a time in your life, because everybody has one time in their life of something that made you happy, something that that filled your heart with love and with joy. Go back to that place and imagine that times a thousand, because when you give your life to Jesus, I'm going to tell you, it changes your heart. Wow. And think of your happy place, your comfort, and then think I can have that multiplied times a thousand. Yeah. If I just put my hands up and say, I'm yours, take me. Yeah. Don't be scared to fall back because he'll catch you. I promise he'll catch you. Yeah. Because that's been my biggest fear is falling back and breaking down that wall. But when you finally do, I'm telling you, he will do something inside of you. It's it's exciting. It's yeah. it's a hunger I've never felt before for yeah. anything. And I don't yeah. it's a it's a it's like a kid in a candy shop. <laughs> like I want more of it. I want to learn more. I yeah. want to be able to pour out into people more. It's yeah. no longer about me. It's about what I can see out of other people. Yeah. And that's what I would tell people. I had that two minutes is Go to the one place in your life that's made you happy, the happiest day of your life. Multiply that by a thousand, and that's what you'll feel. You give your life fully to the Lord. I mean, full time. Don't just part time it. Yeah. Jump into it and go with it. That's good stuff, bro. I love you, man. I love you, Mike. I appreciate we on this journey together, and I uh, can't to see where can't wait to see where it ends up. And uh, it's gonna be good. It's already good, but it's gonna get even better. Yeah. So, anyway. Before we both cry too much, we're going to get off of here today. But I want to thank you guys for joining in with us. Uh, what an honor and a privilege for us. And I'll tell you, I'm speaking for Ryan, who's behind the camera doing all the hard work, how much it matters to us that you guys continue to, to join in with us. It really matters. And so when you hear these stories like Robbie's story, make sure you share them with people because we, there's, there's no telling how God will reach people. And, and I promise you his story is powerful. And there's somebody out there listening to it right now, I believe, that needs to hear it and knows that he's talking to you. Don't wait, man. Uh, Robbie said, my only regret is I waited too long. Well, first off, I don't think you waited too long. I think God's timing's perfect. But I have the same regret. I wish I'd have done it before. I wish I'd have done it earlier. No matter how long I live in Jesus, the only thing I regret is I wish I'd have started before then. <laughs> and so anyway, we appreciate you joining with us today. We love you guys, and we pray you have a blessed day in the Lord, and we'll be praying for you, and you'll be praying for us. Thanks. <laughs>